they are going to be the second one in, and the third one is going to be the State Color Guard VFW Post 453 from Nashua. How did I do, Sarge? Color Guards, attention! Advance the color! Color Guards! Right shoulder! to the flag. Senate Chaplain David Jones, please come forward. I don't know whether you know it or not, but this gentleman here is the reason we have the good weather. He has a direct line upstairs. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Our nation, when is it is at its best, calls forth from each of us the desire and the ability to serve and to sacrifice for a larger purpose and a higher good than just me and my, what I want. Those who have served and are serving in the armed forces of our country are gifts and reminders to all of us that we are about much more than taxes and utilities and politics. We are rather about duty and honor and freedom to do good. We can and we should set aside this bucolic parcel of God's earth to be used in this special and fitting way, but those whom we will bring here to rest are the ones who will dedicate and consecrate and sanctify this place. What needs to be dedicated by us today is our lives, and the ground that needs to be broken this afternoon is in our hearts. Determining to set our feet on that path that leads from selfishness to sacrifice, treading that hard way is how we can honor those for whom we set this place aside today. So let us do that dedicating and that groundbreaking, starting now. Please pray with me. Lord of all, behold us here assembled on the level ground of a graveyard. Remind each of us, despite our differences of background, opportunity, or opinion, that standing before you, all of us are always on the same level in your sight. Prepare this place, O Lord, by the mighty and mysterious power of your Spirit to be a safe and sacred spot of rest for those whose earthly pilgrimage is complete and who have sacrificed for and served this land we love. And remind us of your orders, great commander of our lives. Remind us, whose tour of duty is not yet finished, that 
We are to dedicate our lives and to break the soil of our hearts so that there may actually be liberty and justice for all. Amen. Amen. I'm going to call upon our governor, former state senator, who I was happy as heck to serve with for four years, Gene Shaheen. Thank you, Senator Barnes. I enjoyed serving with you, too. Most of the time, right? <laughs> no, all the time. I'm especially happy to be here today. I remember all oh, about four years ago now, um, being a co-sponsor of the original legislation to establish this veteran cemetery, when Representative Fenton had us all down at a meeting in Newington, and when we thought that perhaps we were going to be able to put the cemetery at peace. And there have been times along the way in the last four years when I know that all of us here were never sure that this day would come. But I'm delighted that it finally has and that we are taking the opportunity and making the commitment to recognize the contribution and the sacrifices that veterans have made to keep this country free and safe for all of us Americans. So I think this is um, a wonderful way for us to show some of our appreciation for all that veterans have done for us and continue to do. And I can assure you that as your governor, I'm going to work hard to keep this on track and to continue to recognize the contributions that veterans make to making this country such a great place. Thank you. speaker is going to be our resident general John E. Blair and General Blair is going to be speaking not only from the heart but for all of the veterans organizations that are here today and for some of those who perhaps couldn't make it today. Thank you General. Governor Shaheen, counselors, uh, congressmen, bass, legislators, and veterans. Boy, you, you know, it's easy to love America when you live, live, when you live in the prettiest part of her. And we certainly do today. <laughs> President Woodrow Wilson said, there is no question what the role of honor in America is. The role of honor consists of the names of men and women who have squared their conduct by ideals of duty. The ground which is broken today will be filled with the men and women who answered the call of duty when others were unable or unwilling. They are on this country's and New Hampshire's roll of honor. They deserve our gratitude and this ground will become hallowed by their presence. As a taxpayer and a resident of New Hampshire, I think we have a great uh, uh, vote of thanks to give to Governor Merrill and Governor Shaheen, the New Hampshire leg legislature, for having the vision and the will to provide this wonderful service to our veterans without creating a new and larger bureaucracy. And for that, our department will get involved in. I wa also want to thank and recognize some people, and I hope I don't offend those that I forget, but I certainly have to thank uh, Chairman Welch and the Public Protection and Veterans Affairs Committee, Representative Fenton for the heart and hard work that he has given to this project, to the House and Senate committee, committee that did all the work to make this today possible, to Senator Barnes and Representative Callaway for their leadership, and uh, to my predecessor, Major General Lloyd Price, who has given me an education and assistance in preparing the budget for this cemetery. 
to the governor and to the legislature and to the veterans. I accept the responsibility and challenge that you give me to administer this wonderful site. To the veterans organizations, I pledge to maintain and continue to consult with you so that our service in this cemetery gives to our veterans the, vet the recognition and the sac and w for which their sacrifice is so deserving. So with that, I, uh, I pledge you my, my hard work and the work of the Department of the Adjutant General. Thank you. Thank you very much, General. Our next speaker is a good friend of mine. Matter of fact, uh, when I started out in the House of Representatives in 1986, uh, his mailbox was right next to mine. Congressman Charlie Bass from the 2nd Congressional District. Thank you very much, Senator Barnes. And uh, I was honored to serve with both of you in the State Senate, and perhaps a few more of you, Burt Cohen, Senator Cohen, who's here today. And I'd just like to remind you, uh, Senator, that you, one of your predecessors, Bill Johnson from Northwood, was also played a role in the early stages of the development of this idea in, in uh, promoting the idea of having a veteran cemetery in New Hampshire. As a member of the legislature and the Senate, it was certainly a high priority for all of us. And then as a member of Congress representing this district, along with the able assistance of Senators Smith and Gregg, we were able to push the federal portion of this project, which is, as you all know, pretty significant, because regardless of our age, our generation, we are all committed to those of you who have put your life, lives down for our nation. And I don't think any generation in America should ever forget that commitment, ever. And as one who is essentially never even given the opportunity, thank God, to serve this nation in war, I can only tell you that we will, that we will not forget your commitment to our country. And it is yet displayed once again here today by our dedication to a cemetery for the veterans of this state. It is an honor for me to be able to participate in this ceremony, and it is not an event that I will forget soon. Thank you all very much, and Senator, thank you for allowing me to participate. Seems I have a lot of friends here today, because the next fellow is certainly a friend of mine in the state of New Hampshire, and it's uh, Executive Counselor, Governor Executive Counselor, Peter Spaulding, who represents this district very well. And Peter is representing the whole Governor's Council as he comes up here and gives us a few words. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Senator. A few years ago, there was a weekly television program, which at the end of the half hour, the star would sit back, light up a cigar, and proclaim, I love it when a plan comes together. This has been a uh, project that's lasted well over 10 years. It's had a rather torturous route, whether it's been through legislature, governors, executive council, various state agencies, veterans organizations, uh, the city of Washington with our congressional delegation and various federal agencies, but it's finally happening here today. People like uh, Jack Barnes and former Senator David Currier and other members who've been spearheading this effort from the beginning, uh, this is certainly their day along with the representatives of the veterans organizations. Uh, it's a great day, it's a great event, and it's been a great plan. Thank you. Next comes a gentleman who has attended every veteran cemetery meeting that I have been at, and he's not on that committee, but I feel like he's part of it. He's a selectman here from Bosco, and he'd like to come forward and say a few words for the town. 
He's helped us put all things together so the town would welcome this cemetery and work well with everyone to make sure it happened. And I'm going to call on Ted Houston, please. Thank you, Senator Barnes. The siting of a New Hampshire Veterans Cemetery has been a long process. I'm a short timer. I've only been involved for a little over four years when I first brought up this site to the then Chairman Richardson Benton in the fall of 1992. The first touring of this site was in a snowstorm in February of 93. Believe me, not a day like today. Short timer, long timer. I'm thrilled that my state is going to have a veteran cemetery and it's going to be in my town. I'm proud to welcome you and the cemetery and I know that the great majority of the citizenry of Boscoan join me in pride and appreciation of the groundbreaking that will bring fruition to a long desired accomplishment. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ted. We're all happy to be here in your town. <coughs> Sitting in the front row is a gentleman that uh, I was very sorry to see did not seek re-election last time, as he's always been a friend, and he certainly has been a friend of this Veterans Cemetery Committee and of all the veterans in the state of New Hampshire trying to put this plan together. And the governor was good enough to appoint him to the committee. He is the governor's representative on our committee, and boy, she couldn't have picked a better guy. Stacy Cole, please come forward, Stacy. Stacy. Stacy was the uh, former, uh, former deputy speaker, and he's here today to say a few words for Donna Sytek, the uh, speaker of the house who was unable to be here. And if anyone ever reads the Union Leader on Saturday, Stacy's in it every single week. And last week it was, he was talking about turtles. So if anyone has any questions on turtles, get it before he gets out of here. Thank you, dear friend Jack. Governor Shaheen, distinguished guests, it's a double honor for me to be here today because I was requested to represent the Honorable Donna Sytek, Speaker of the House of Representatives. Unfortunately, she was not able to be with us today, but sends her regrets for not being with us, and her best wishes, and the official greetings of the New Hampshire House of Representatives. It was about three years ago that the then Speaker of the House, Harold Burns, called Laurie Platt, his legal and the legal advisor to the House into his office, and he said to us, I want you two to go and work with the cemetery committee and do everything you can to bring the, the force of this office so that that project will be completed. And I must say that Laurie and I have been to every meeting since, I believe, of the committee, and we've enjoyed working with them, and now, uh, as designee of, of the good governor, I am a full-fledged member of the committee. And that's, that's something uh, that's very worthwhile, believe me. It is fitting that this ground, lying beside the banks of the Merrimack River, about halfway between our Great White Mountains and our sea coast, it is indeed fitting that this ground was selected to be the final resting place for our New Hampshire men and women who gave of themselves in service to our state and our nation as members of the armed forces. May those who are laid to rest here forever rest in peace. As we leave this soon to be hallowed ground, let us pledge to live our lives according to the principles of liberty and freedom that are embodied in the constitutions of our New Hampshire state and the United States of America, so help us God.
time has run out. Now it's my turn. Senate President Joe Delahunty, who was a veteran of the U.S. Army, was not able to be here due to personal reasons at home, and he asked me to convey his warmest wishes to everyone that's here today and pledges that as the leader of the state senate, he will work closely with the House and with the governor in making sure that September of this year is when we all come up here again and we cut the ribbon to open the cemetery. That's a commitment we have from Senator Delahunty. And if anybody knows Joe, you know it's for real. A couple of fellows couldn't be here today, one of them being Senator Gregg and Senator Smith, who are down in Washington, I think, looking after our dollars, they told me anyway. But I want to tell you that those two gentlemen were very instrumental in freeing up the federal money so we could be here today. Leon, my vice chairman, and I were starting to perspire a little bit because we weren't quite sure that we should have this ceremony without the check from Washington in hand. <laughs> we looked at each other and said, ah, not a problem. But we made the decision to wait for the check. And, and Senator Smith and Senator Gregg were very, very helpful in following through to get the paperwork from the bottom of the pile to the top of the pile and getting it up here to us. So the money has come in, the matching funds have come in, that's why you're here today. So thank you to those two gentlemen. I would like the following people to please come up here. And the people I'm calling up here are current members of the Veterans Cemetery Committee. I would like Leon Callawa to come front and center, please. I would like Representative James Fenton to please come front and center. I would like Dennis Fields to come front and center. I have to say I left out that uh, Leon Callawa is a uh, state representative, as is James Fenton, and as is Dennis Fields. Senator Bert Cohen, please come forward. Senator Johnson, please come forward. Senator Amy Patnard, please come forward. Mr. Richard Ducey, would you please join the crowd? And Kenny Leidner, last but not least, he's the man that sends all the bulletins out to you, takes the notes, and gets a hold of Leon and I, and tells us, uh, how much pressure we have to put on in the right places to do certain things. He's a good friend of all veterans in the state. All you veterans know Kenny, I'm sure. I'd like to have a round of applause because those folks you're looking at are the reason that we're here today. Representative Fenton, I'm going to single him out because he was the chairman of this committee for quite a period of time. And see that it's a joint committee, what we do, we switch committees off when it's a joint committee. The House has it for such a period of time, and then the Senate takes over. And it just so happens it was the Senate's turn, and obviously my friend has stayed on to help me and be with us here today and in the future. And he's been able to give us a lot of good advice as we go along. It's a joint effort, and it's no one person or body doing it. But these folks I brought up here are something. I left somebody out. Lori Platt, will you please come front and center? <coughs> Lori's name, uh, my buddy over there, Stacy, uh, stole some of my thunder. This lovely lady here, uh, she's not an official member of the committee, but I'm going to tell you, without her, uh, Leon and, and Jim and myself, we probably would have been in court two or three times. She kept us on the straight and narrow and made sure things were right. And I certainly appreciate everything she's done for us. She's been tremendous during the whole process. Thank you. <laughs> Behind eight good men stands one woman to keep us all going. Isn't that something, huh? <laughs> Governor, that sort of ties in with the <laughs> Governor. I, that just slipped out. <laughs> Not a bad ad lib, huh? <laughs> I figured you would. <laughs> okay, we have... You fellows can stand right there, and young lady can stand, because you're going to be on these shovels pretty soon, so don't go too far away. Uh, 
I have some other folks whose names have been mentioned, and I, I hope the heck I don't miss anybody. David Welch, would you please come on up here in the front? Representative Welch from Kingston. I know you're here, as I saw you when I came in. You can't hide. You can run, but you can't hide, David. Come on up. Is Charlie Vaughn here? Representative Charlie Vaughn, please come up here in the front. Charlie Vaughn, there's a guy I'm going to tell you about from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. There's a super guy right there. There's a lot of super people, but this guy is high on my list. I, I love him. He's a great guy. I would like former state senator from District 17, Bill Johnson, would you please come forward? Bill did an awful lot of work on this. When I was in the original house, I read these stories about him, seeing I'm in the same district as Bill with the Veterans Cemetery, and I said, by golly, what a wonderful cause that is. Now, let's see. I have Jack Sherburn, Representative Sherburn, former Representative Sherburn from Deerfield. Will you please come up here? There's another guy that did a lot of work. You're seeing all the people that got this thing started and worked hard on it because they believed in it. And today, when I met these folks as they came in, they had the biggest smiles on their faces that you ever did see. Now, Stacy, not Stacy, I'm sorry, Connie Moran. Where are you, Connie? Come on up here, Connie. <laughs> Connie was a member of the committee when I came there, but he decided, uh, maybe it was after I took over as chairman, that he'd resign. <laughs> that wasn't the reason, was it? No, okay. Connie, a very important player on the whole, uh, the whole team. And someone who isn't here, he's in St. Louis, and he wanted to be here very badly, is Senator Dave Currier. He was mentioned by my friend Peter. Uh, Dave uh, was the vice chairman of the committee when I first came on it, and he uh, did a lot of work, and he still continues to. You have the brochure, some of you, that was passed out. That's all his artwork from his company, and we have him to thank for that. And he told me that uh, anything he could do for us, he'd be happy to come front and center, and I, I believe that. So I'm tickled pink that uh, Dave is still with us on that. Now comes the moment. Well, some of the committee members, not all of the committee members, so you can breathe a sigh of relief. A few of them would like to say a few words. And I'm going to call on the first one, my good friend, James Fenton. Thank you, Jack. Governor Shaheen, my colleagues on the Cemetery Oversight Committee, and all you, our distinguished guests. The fabric of this most ambitious project was sewn not by a common thread, but by many dedicated people over a course of many years. And they had this purpose, to assure those New Hampshire veterans who spent their youth, their body, and their mind defending the values of this country and this great state. A place of eternal rest, a place dignified and held sacred by those generations now and in the future who will enjoy those privileges and those rights of liberty and freedom so gallantly and bravely defended by those who will lay here in final rest. That place is right here, nearby the shores of Merrimack River. I remember a Tuesday in June 27th receiving information relative to the availability of federal grants for state veterans cemeteries. With the cooperation of many state agencies, we submitted a federal grant application representing 50% of the estimated cost for the cemetery. The deadline was June the 30th at 5 p.m. We submitted that June the 30th at 4.45 p.m. via a fax. That gives us a little gall there. We, uh, we remember that the, uh, I can remember when we first formed the committee and this bill as 
Governor Shaheen has mentioned. And the work of getting it through the Strengths Affairs Committee of the House with Colonel, uh, Colonel Richardson Benson. Uh, in that bill, it included establishing the State Veterans Cemetery Oversight Committee. And Colonel Benson was its first chairman. <coughs> The disappointments and frustrations as the committee viewed promising sites, when a particular site was chosen or selected, it was made public. The committee could not achieve foreclosure. The day when Ted Houston, representing the Boston Board of Selectmen, <coughs> invited the committee to revisit this area of the Merrimack Forest, we were greeted by Ted and his fellow board members. Uh, they escorted the committee members on a tour of the area and I know I speak for all of them, we were very, very impressed with their friendly candor and obviously the pristine site that we have here today. I can remember a field trip here by Veterans Affairs National Director of the State Veterans Cemetery, Al Graver. Uh, we have the privilege to introduce him on this site to the black, si black fly season. <laughs> he never saw those monsters before. And we, we followed that up by going to lunch and we introduced him to elephant garlic at the then Phil A. Buster's restaurant in Concord. Now Hal continues to remind us of that experience. As we ceremonially churn the first shovel of earth, I'm reminded of the words of that great English statesman, Sir Winston Churchill. <coughs> this is not the end. It may not be the beginning of the end. But this is... <coughs> the next committee member that would like to say a few words is Representative Dennis Fields from Merrimack. <laughs> Thank you. I tell you, when I woke up this morning and I saw the chilly weather and everything, and I'm saying to myself, I just hope we get a great turnout. Senator Barnes, you thought we'd get 200. I think we got well 200 here. Governor Shaheen, thank you. It's an honor. Stacy. Many of my other friends, so no more to name. I want to thank you for allowing me to participate in today's historic groundbreaking ceremony. The committee has waited a long time for this moment. New Hampshire Veterans Memorial Cemetery will offer those who have paid the ultimate price for their country a memorial in their own state. Not somewhere else in the country, but a Vietnam veteran, a member of the State Veterans Oversight Committee for the cemetery. I know just how important this project is to veterans like myself. It's a project that lends credibility to everything any veteran has fought and died for. I'd like to express my gratitude and thanks, especially to Colonel Benton, way back in 84, when this was uh, getting ready to start. Hopefully we can find one somewhere. Colonel Benton is interesting. I, I have to mention this. And when I was a new member, this is my eighth term, he took me in the office and he said with some of us and Jim Fenton, he says, uh, oh, I think that's what Jim was here right at that moment, but anyway. Uh, he said, Dennis, we need to look for a cemetery for the veterans. And I looked at him as a new member and I said, okay, what do we have to do? He said, well, we need money and we need a site. <coughs> we didn't have either. So you can tell what the job has been up to now. <laughs> then there was Ken Todd, former commandant New Hampshire Veterans Home who helped the committee in its earlier stages. Little did I know what I was getting into. Many people, including both veterans and civilians, worked diligently together to get to this very moment that we're sharing today. A special thank you to my former chairman, Dave Welch. I want to thank you for spurring the committee on. He's always been there to offer us guidance and wisdom for this very important endeavor. Thank you for Another word of thanks goes to General Blair of the National Guard. He's been very helpful to us. And also former President of the Senate and former Dread Commissioner Bill Bartlett for assisting us in playing and being part of this, of acquiring this beautiful piece of property we have today. I have to do one little personal thing, and I hope you can bear with me for a second. I have a friend in Miramac, 
wanted to be here today. He's a great veteran, a friend of mine for a long time, over 20 years from Miramar. He got killed in an automobile accident about a year ago. He's a World War II veteran, and I just want to say, Tom Iverson, Chief Police of Pembroke's here, that was his dad. And this moment is here. And I just want to say this, and it comes from, from me as a friend, and also to your dad, a personal friend. One person who did all he could do to make sure this dream of a cemetery became a reality it was Mr. Tom Iverson Sr. from Merrimack, a great personal friend and World War II veteran. He did all he could do to make sure the cemetery came to be with me. A member of BFW Post 8641 in Merrimack, he played an essential role in keeping many veteran groups abreast of the progress being made on the project. He had the utmost faith that it would become a reality. Tom, your dad will now have his final resting place very shortly. Thank you. There are far too many people for me to thank by name, but you know who you are. Our committee thanks you from the bottom of our hearts. Without your encouraging words and support, this project would not be what it is today. And also, before I leave, I want to thank one other group, part of us veterans, is our great ladies auxiliaries from all of the groups that are here today, and I admire you ladies too. And I want to thank you personally for being here and being supportive of us. Thank you. I knew I was going to forget someone. Is Ken Tarr here at the ceremony? <coughs> Ken Tarr, uh, does anyone see Ken? If Ken's here, please come up and join these folks. Ken was a member of the committee for a number of years and was a big help to us. I hope he's here. I don't see anybody moving toward me, so I guess Ken isn't here, but I do want to recognize him also. I wanted him on one of these shovels up here today, but he told me he wanted to wield one, but I guess we'll have to wait till September and get him up here. Our next committee member who wanted to say a few words, I can't imagine him saying a few words because <laughs> I've served in the Senate with him now for five years, but it's Senator Bert Cohen from Portsmouth, a real good member of our committee. Come on over, Bert. He knows I'm a man of few words. As has been said before, this day has been a long time coming. And as part of the great Veterans Cemetery Committee for many years, I join with my colleagues, we'll never forget tramping through the snow and the mud at potential sites all across the state of New Hampshire, looking to find just the right site for a state veteran cemetery. We found it. It's here. I have looked forward to this day for a long, long time. Veterans who serve this country can never get enough thanks from the citizens. Establishing a veteran cemetery here in New Hampshire is the least we can do, and the timing couldn't be more appropriate, as today is the first day of Vietnam Veterans Memorial Weekend. On behalf of all the people in New Hampshire, I'd like to express my deep appreciation and gratitude to all those who have been so generous of their time, talent, labor, and resources in completing the planning and implementation of the construction of New Hampshire Veterans Memorial Cemetery. Every noble cause demands a balance and effort for effective achievement. For this reason, every team devoted to a cause needs a diversity of members. Some who take the lead, others who work more quietly in the background. And we've heard from many of the high-ranking public officials. And I'd like to take this moment to thank all those from the veterans organizations, state agencies, National Guard, and legislative staff, and there are many, who have worked tirelessly in the background. Without your quiet but truly vital help, we certainly wouldn't be here today. Soon these grounds will become hella. We'll remember those resting here who have finished life's long journey uh, yep. and returned to the peaceful hills of home. The eternal words of Abraham Lincoln say it all. From these honored dead, we take increased devotion. The majesty of the pines around us speak the words lest we forget, and the cemetery chapel will keep a silent vigil over all, a fitting and impressive and appropriate tribute to our veterans of the state of New Hampshire. Thank you.
guest speaker is Richard Ducey. Dick is the director of the State Veterans Council. Good afternoon. I just wanted to thank uh, the people that have been involved with this that have not been on committees, that are not in public office, that do not have uh, titles in, uh, in uh, the state or federal government. And that is specifically the leaders of the veteran service organizations who have always been vigilant and prodding and poking and sometimes annoying us into action. It's a necessary function. We are one of those unusual groups of people that need to advocate for ourselves, even though we represent a complete cross-section of, of the state. Without your assistance, without your prodding, gentle at times, not so gentle at others, we might not be here today. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I found myself thinking this morning on the way to work that this is where I will come for my final rest. If I behave, according to my wife, it won't be any time soon. <laughs> but that's a very sombering thought. It's a thought that each and every one of us must face at some point. And so I found myself thinking about what is the importance of the cemetery. And I know what the importance of it is to me, but I think it has an importance to all of us. To veterans, it's to have, as a place of eternal rest, a sacred ground to share with our comrades, without regard to our wealth, our station in life, without regard to our branch of service or the war that we fought in. We stand as equals before God and lie here for eternity with the simple and yet profound statement, we serve. But it has importance to other members of the community in New Hampshire too. To non-veterans, this place stands for the sacrifices that we made, not for ourselves, but for you, our families, our friends, our neighbors. This is a place which reflects the sacrifices we made to protect your freedoms. It's a place of history and a place of tradition. We share its quiet dignity with you and hope you can come here and gain a sense of commitment to make your state and your nation a better place. And finally, and perhaps most importantly to all, it has an importance to our children. All that has gone before us will be in vain if the generations of the future are not provided with the opportunity to understand that freedom has never been free. So in a very real sense, this cemetery belongs to each and every one of us. And I say to you today, as we honor our veterans, so do we honor ourselves, our history, and our future. Thank you very much. State Veterans Cemetery, and that's our DOT department. And Matt Moore, Jim Marshall, and Michelle Giuliano, they're here. Would you raise your hands, please, so the folks can see you. These are the folks that have got us here. If you had been here an hour earlier, there was old Michelle out there directing this guy with a great big huge roller to get this thing flat for us. And I said, what are you doing? She says, I've got to have this flat so it's right for everybody. And by golly, she did it. And the department uh, has hired a construction outfit that I'm sure, Severino, they're going to do a great job. Our architect is here, Mr. Doug Greiner. Wave your hand. He's the man that is laying out the cemetery. He's been working with us. We want to get done. He's been part of this right along with us. And the last, thank you, and I hope I did it okay. There's a lady out here by the miss by the name of Mrs. Helen Burke. Helen Burke, would you raise your hand, please? Most of you know who Helen is. Right at the present time, she is helping this committee. She came in and offered her help to us because we had a slight problem with uh, six of our comrades. And our comrades are down in her funeral parlor waiting for September to come up here. And without her, I would have had a lot of egg on my face and I would have been worse off than I've ever been. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thanks for being here today. We owe her a great...
Now, Governor, here's your opportunity to show us how you put petunias in. Come on up. <laughs> We're going to give you the gold show. And now, right along the front here, could I have the current members of the committee grab a shovel? I want, let's see, who do I want here? I want Leon. Please come forward with a shovel. Jimmy Fenton, come by with a shovel. Dennis Fields, come by with a shovel. Senator Cohen, grab a shovel. Tell Johnson, grab a shovel. Amy Pattenard, grab a shovel. Amy, Amy Pattenard is here with her shovel, and she's on our committee, and she happens to be the state senator representing this district. What are you doing? Hey, guys. Nick Ducey, please come forward, grab your shovel. Kenny Leidner, please grab your shovel. Where's Kenny? Kenny's right there. He's grabbing. He tells me he was a great latrine digger in the old days. If you want to see how he has it. Laurie Platt, will you please come forward and grab a shovel? Stacy Cole, I'd like you up here with a shovel in your hand, please. Yeah, I know. I read your columns every Saturday. I understand. <laughs> Now, I've got two shovels there left, and I'm going to ask folks to double up. I would like to have Bill Johnson and Jack Sherbert on a shovel. Please come forward, Jack and Bill. And Dave Welch and Connie Moran. Connie, you and, you and Dave grab a shovel, please. Who am I missing? Am I missing any members? Who am I missing? Well, I'm going to stand next to the governor. I feel safer there. <laughs> So at this moment, the governor is going to be breaking ground, and it will then be official. You're ready? When I go to three, this is going to be it. One, two, three. Ah! What we have here is something for our governor, and she doesn't know this. We gave her staff a copy of the program, but we cut off at of the bottom, which is the end of the program, basically, so she doesn't know what it is, and boy, oh boy, I hope, Governor, that you are able to hang this in your woodshed, so the next time you have me in there, I'll see it on your wall. <laughs> it's a ceremonial shovel. Oh, wow. What it says is May 2nd, 1997, Governor Gene Shaheen, New Hampshire Memorial Veteran Cemetery, groundbreaking, Bosco in New Hampshire. Governor, you can hang that on your wall. Now, I'm going to, well, yeah, let's get a picture of the governor. Guys, get your cameras going. Get her with, get her with the shovel. Somebody said she might hit me with it. She hasn't yet. We're not going to ask when I'm with the shovel. It's going to be on your wall. Uh, we thank you so much, Governor, for being on this it's a terrific day for the veterans and their families in New Hampshire. Great day for the state. I'm going to finish up by two things. I'm going to say thank you for all of you veterans groups that have come along and, and helped us in the Veterans Committee, the folks that show up meeting after meeting to prod us on and to get the commitment. These guys kept saying and the ladies kept saying, when's it going to be? Well, I'm going to end by saying we're going to see you all again this September when the ribbon is cut and we'll be ready to start interment. You're not going to hear from me again. There are a couple of waves out there that had lunch with me, and I, they're, they're waving to us. And I asked them if there were any wax here, and they, they didn't understand what I was saying. Oh, there is a wax here. Oh, my goodness. I'm in big trouble. Uh, I am going to ask you all to please stand as the colors are retired. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hey!
forward at a half step. March! Audience present. Huh? is going to be. It's, it's all cut in and over in that area is where the chapel is going to be. So be